Hello YouTube and welcome to lesson 10 of After Effects tutorial series. Today we are going to look at 3D layers and cameras. So we are finally moving on to 3D in After Effects. So now uh, this is always I'm going to create a new composition right here and then I'm going to uh, select SDTV all right and that's it. So I'm going to make two boxes over here. Let me uh, create a rectangular shape just like that and then I'm going to uh, drag another rectangular shape on top of it just to show you how 3D works. Okay, so let me change the color of that. So let me go into uh, let me go into shape. All right, uh, let me go to fill and change the color of it to something uh, quite different. Okay, let me change it to blue and let me change this uh, change the color of this one, the background as well, and let me change it to Okay, this color right here. Now, this is a 2D layer, okay? So now, to turn it to 3D layer, uh, you go over here at the bottom. On the layer, you see the cube. If you do not see the cube, then you can just turn this, toggle the buttons at the bottom over here until you find the cube. So it is under this one. No, not this one. Under this one, right here. Let me just toggle that on. That's the 3D layer. It's not 3D layer, okay? Maybe this one. Yeah, this one. At the at the first one. So the name of this um, layer is the layer switch switches pane, okay? So I turn this on, and you can see a cube shape thing right over here, just besides our motion blur option. So I'm going to turn this into 3D, and I'm going to turn. And as I do that, you can see that you actually see an arrow right here. And if I were to uh, like turn on this one. Uh, as well, now both the layers are 3D. Note that if you do not turn this uh, uh, on, then it'll uh, lay as a 2D flat layer and it won't work like a 3D layer. So I got to see the sides of it. So this is actually flat. And now if you were to go into the transform menu, you can actually see G rotation and Z axis over there. So if I were to rotate this, uh, rotate the Z axis, you can actually see that I can rotate this from the side because now this is actually a 3D layer. Okay, so now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this a bit above. I'm going to add in some shadows and lights as well because that makes the things more interesting and I'm going to use cameras in order to animate it. So now what I can simply do is let me just uh, select uh, this one, okay, this layer, and I want to make sure this is a bit above this layer right here. So what I can do is I can go over here and select four views. And once I select four views, I have the top view. I'm seeing the same option from the top right here. This is the front view, the normal front view, and the right view. So as I select this layer, you can actually see a blue axis. That's like a Z, and that's the Z position. That's on zero right now. If I were to move this around, you can actually see that it actually moves backwards. Okay, and now I can actually select this. I can select the Z axis and move it on top of it. And as I move it on top of it, you can see it actually covers my layer behind it. So now this actually does not depend on the arrangement of layers here at the bottom anymore because that is not how 3D layers work. So these are independent and these are independent. So now this is the position I want. Okay, this is the exact position I want. And I want to go to the active camera option right here and go back to uh, one view so that I got the uh, main view right here. So now what I know is that I got the background. I got the background as I want it to be. And I got this a bit above. I know that <coughs> the D uh, axis is actually in front of it as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some lights over here as well because I want some shadows as well. So I'm going to right click click on new and I can choose light. Now you can choose different types of light here. So I can simply choose a spotlight, a parallel light, an ambient light, whatever you want. And I can choose the color of the light as well. Let me just leave that to uh, white, uh, ambient light, or maybe this point light. I want the shadows as well. So let me choose point light, press OK. If you want natural effect, you can uh, select and fall off so that uh, the light gets uh, the in intensity of the light the light gets weaker uh, as uh, it, it gets further away, just like in real life. If you want the light to be 
are consistent uh, in, uh, with, um, not in relevant to distance, then you can simply choose none. I'm simply going to choose smooth because that is how I like it. And I'm going to press OK. And there I have the light. And as you can see that the light actually lights up the area right here. I can double click the, on this and increase the intensity if I want to. I can also increase the radius of it. Okay, I can increase the radius of it. I can increase the strength of the light and I guess it does not be, reach the end yet. So what I can actually do is I can move around the light as well. Let me choose two views. I can choose any number of views I want. So you can actually see that the light is here. So I can simply reposition this and you can see the update on my right panel as well. So I'm going to put one light over here. I can have more than one light. So that's actually up to me on how I want the animation to be. So I can right click, click on new and add in another light as well and say, okay, that's the point light. Let me have a bit of uh, reddish light over here. Press OK and press OK again. And I have a second source of light right there. So it actually gives me a cool effect just like that. And notice that I have not changed the color of the backgrounds yet. I have not changed the color at all. It just uh, is giving me this effect. So I can move this to the top. Oh, oops, sorry. Okay, I'm going to select this one, this light, move this to the top, and move this one to the bottom. I did select, um, did say enable shadows, but I do not see shadows anywhere. So now you can see that when I double click on this, the cast shadows is on. I can also increase the uh, shadow darkness. I can also increase the shadow diffusion and so forth. I can double click on this and you can actually see the shadows, but I do not see the shadows here. What is happening? Well, for that, what I would need to do is on the background layer, I want the shadow, so I need to expand this. You have to make sure that this is a 3D layer and you get the material option right here and the accept shadows is on. Okay, so what happening? What is happening right now? The cast shadows, however, is off. So I do not want the background to cast shadows, but I want the foreground to cast shadows. So I'm going to expand this, uh, expand the material options. And inside here, you can see the cast shadow is off. So if I were to turn this on, okay, you can actually see that the shadow is actually there now. And it is according to the intensity of the light. If I were to move the light around, you can actually see that the shadow direction changes as well. So that actually gives you a very, very cool effect, uh, just like that. So I can also uh, add in the keyframe in the lights and then have a very, very cool effect. So now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move out the lights and then uh, having some animations. So now I'm going to go back onto the front camera mode, all right? Uh, of, of course, not the front, the active camera mode. Let me choose view one so that I see this. And I'm going to add in some animation to the light. I want it to start from here, from this position. Let me just go over to quarter view so that I have a faster uh, rendering over there. And I can also choose fast draft for fast rendering. Notice that when I choose fast, rend fast draft, it does not show me the shadows, but uh, this makes uh, it easier for me to work because it is quite responsive now. Okay, so now I'm going to choose the light. I'm going to press P because I want the position and then click on the keyframe. And at the end, I want the light to move uh, around till here, maybe in this direction. Okay, I, and, and I want the animation here as well. So you can see that the animation is there. I'm going to press P on this, uh, click on the keyframe. And then at the end, I'm going to move around the light like this. All right. Okay, so now I have a simple light animation. And if I were to like turn off the uh, draft, fast draft mode, let me tip, press adaptive resolution and you can actually see that there's a shadow animation as well. And it actually looks cool and it didn't take me much time. So now what I want to do is I want the background to be bigger because I do not want to see the black as it's right there. So I am going to increase the size of, size of this, just scale it out. And you can see that that does the trick. That's it. So I have a cool little animation right here. Okay. So now I can add in some text as well if you want. But just before uh, we, I, I export this out, I want to actually 
uh, use a camera to make sure that my camera is moving as well. Right now, by default, the camera in After Effects is still. So if you have in a camera, you can move around uh, the canvas just like you would uh, while shooting a real movie. So now, if you were to right click, click on New and click on Camera, you can actually see that that's the camera. You can select the film size. If you know about photography, then this is actually will be familiar to you. For now, I'm going to leave this to default because we are not digging in too deep into this. Let's just press OK and the camera is created for me. And once it is done, I can actually go over here uh, in the camera tool, unified camera tool right over here and select orbit the camera. And what it allows me to do is if I were to click and drag, you can actually see that it gives me a cool effect just like that. Now there's some cool 3D animation right there. And I can animate this however I want. So now uh, these are the camera options. If I were to go over to two views, I can actually see the camera right here. I can even drag the camera in and out for zoom in and out effect. And I can also simply work in view one in the active camera mode, that is this camera, and uh, select this one. This, so I'm in the uh, track camera mode, okay? So that's especially zooming in and out, actually going in and out, moving the camera itself. That's the track that's moving around the viewpoint of the camera. And then finally the orbit, and that is the uh, moving around of the camera itself. So now uh, I'm going to add an animation to this. So you do, do see that there's in, even in the unified camera option, you have the option to actually move it out. Okay, so now I can zoom it in, out, all right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in an orbit to the camera. So I'm going to uh, start from this portion right here. And for that, I'm going to go into the transform option for the camera. Let me see that the position is changing. So that's what I want. So I want the position to change and I'm going to make sure that I have the position on track camera as well. Let me just move it in and out then it'll actually adjust the thing for me. Now, I want it to like teens over here. So I want this to zoom in a bit and then let's say orbit the camera a bit just like this, orbit the camera a bit so that I have this kind of an animation. That's a cool effect. All right. Now, what I want to do is I may want to zoom out from here, a quick zoom out maybe. So I want to zoom out. So I, I'm going to keep the keyframes well together. I'm going to zoom out. It automatically adds in the keyframes, so I do not need to do anything right here. So zoom out. Make sure that you add in keyframe in this point as well because that is important. Otherwise, it will mess up the animation later on. And then maybe I want to uh, orbit the camera again, just like this, and end the animation. All right. So I have a simple animation just like that. This will be helpful for logo animations. And you can do this with anything. So I'm going to select all the keyframes, right click on it, and select Easy A's. And if you were to, if you uh, were to pay uh, attention to this, you can actually see F9 is the shortcut key for this. So I'm going to select all the keyframes and simply press F9. That also does the trick of uh, selecting some. For some reason, my keyboard is not working, so I'm simply going to choose this. All right. So now uh, I have the easy A's in and the easy A's out option, which actually results in a very cool animation. So I, I can turn this back to full now. All right, and I got the full quality animation that's over there. Now I'm going to render this out, and before I render it out, I want to make sure I have the motion blur on because that I think that really makes the things interesting. You see how that looks. Uh, let's see this portion of it. Let, let's render this one. Okay, this portion of it. Okay, let it render full. All right, let's wait. And over here, maybe. Okay. Uh, not much of it, uh, I can see. So I'm going to render this anyway, so I'm going to go over to come. My motion blur is on, so I'm going to go over to file, export, uh, add to render queue. And that's my render queue. So select uh, this one. Let me select uh, QuickTime. As a 264, that's fine. Disable the audio. Press OK. Select the uh, file folder, that's the lesson 10 folder, 
Let me just save this and render it out. And we're done. So now I'm going to uh, go over to the file. Uh, let me go over to uh, my lesson 10 folder. Let me just open this up. And this is how it actually looks. And it kind of looks awesome. All right. So you can create some cool 3D-like effects uh, right there. The blur kind of looks um, choppy, but we uh, will uh, look on how to control the blurs and everything on later lessons. So now, like always, please like, comment, share, and subscribe.